In our last video, we stepped away from sound for a little bit to talk about uh, setting up bass drum pedals and, and how the different parts of the pedal interact to make your sound and to help you interact with the drum. And in keeping with that for, you know, one more video today, uh, I wanted to talk about a topic that's really important to me, which is what I bring when I'm going to a gig or when I'm going out for the weekend for a few gigs, uh, particularly if I'm using backline drum sets. I always bring my own cymbals, I pretty much always bring my own snare drum and bass drum. But beyond that, lots of times you're going to a venue, there's a drum set there, and you're going to use that, but you also don't really know what it is or the state of it. It might be a really nice set of drums that's seen a lot of action and gotten beat up pretty bad. So this is sort of my field triage kit for making sure that at the very least I can get through the gig, uh, get a good sound and have a good time. So the first thing is, where are the weak points in a drum set that you're going to and you're like, I don't know what, you know what it's going to be. Um, the first and probably most, for me, obvious one, especially since I like my cymbals, is I always bring a variety of cymbal felts and also a variety of sleeves. Now, something that people don't often realize, or at least I didn't, is that the the threads and stuff on the end of cymbal stands vary sometimes from brand to brand. So, for instance, this one I, I bought in a store and it's actually threaded on the inside, so it only fits on some stands. And if the threading is different, it's just not going to go on there at all. It will just stop. So that led me to buying these DW ones, which actually already have a felt glued onto them. And these are a little oversized and they'll fit on just about anything. They're also not super tall. So if you're running into a stand that doesn't have a lot of threading at the top, uh, these will work on just about anything. Um, additionally, the big felt underneath the bottom hi-hat symbol, these go missing all the time because they fall off of the stand when the stage guys are moving the gear around because usually those stands don't have a hi-hat clutch on them. And if you don't have your hi-hat clutch, you don't have hi-hats. So you have to bring this. And also important to know, not all hi-hat stands have a post that's the same size. For instance, Yamaha stands have a skinnier post. So a Yamaha hi-hat clutch is not gonna go on a DW stand or on a Thomas stand. It's just gonna and not go in. So I am all about these Remos um, because they thought of that. And this also has a locking mechanism underneath that's pressure and spring-loaded so that you will never ever have it come unscrewed. Next in line that's super crucial is drum keys, obviously. I bring a variety of them because I've just sort of accumulated them over the years. It's worth noting that not every drum in the world has the same size top of the tension rods. So occasionally, uh, for instance, this key won't fit on because it's too big and then this one will be too big and not turn the tension rod so having a couple is just a little bit of a safety net that's worth doing beyond that a few tools um, i carry a multi-tool that's got pliers and a knife for if someone has put gaff tape all over the top of the cymbal stand because there was no felt or sleeve on it i cut that stuff off Again, you don't need a fancy one. Any old one will do. You just really, you're going to want pliers and a knife in there, maybe scissors. Other functional things, if you've got a really unruly floor tom or if the room is just super boomy, having at least one, if not two or three handkerchiefs in the bag to lay on the drums to tame them a little bit. A lot of times I'll use a drum key to hold it on to the drum where I just put this over one of the tuning keys and then ram the key on top of it and it'll keep it stable on top of the drum for the duration of the set so you don't have it sliding off. I carry these little guys for situations where I know I'm gonna have to play as hard as I can all night and I don't want uh, tension screws backing out of the snare drum. Uh, you just push them over the top of the screw and this touches onto the rim and keeps the screw from turning and they're reusable you can get a box of a hundred of them for like five dollars and they're super handy to have i always carry multiple beaters my pedal always has a regular round felt danmar on it but i also bring wood 
This is also a Danmar for if it's a sort of attack situation where I need to make sure that the clarity of the kick is coming through. Uh, or if I find myself needing to play aggressive music on a double-headed bass drum that's not ported, where you're going to run into woofy situations and they might want to mic it from both sides, you can help the engineer by giving them something like this. On the flip side, boomy, crazy room where you need to be quiet, big old fluffy uh, Vader, bomber beater. Um, just got this one. It's a square Danmar. And this has been super fun, actually more for recording situations where you want the punch of felt, but just with more weight and surface area behind it, it draws out like a lower fundamental out of the drum. I pretty much always play a riveted ride cymbal regardless of the gig, because um, I just like the behavior of it. And a lot of gigs I do have brush situations in them. Um, so it's nice to have that kind of sustain underneath. So extra split rivets in case they come out in your bag or get lost somewhere, definitely worth having. Um, maybe different types, I kind of like these little brass ones. So I just got a big bag of those. If I want to go further, got this awesome little sizzler from uh, Revival Drum Shop. It's got the R on there. And this one's nice because these things actually are bendable. They're made of copper and they come off so you can change the length of it at your leisure. And right now I've got it set for if I have it on an 18 or maybe a 20, but you know, it came like this big. Uh, earplugs. I, a few years ago, bought a box of like 200 pairs of these 35 dB, like maximum blockage uh, foam earplugs. I carry them for when the filter plugs on my keys are not enough for a really, really loud situation. And frankly, I also carry them for other people in the band because sometimes you get in a situation where it's going to be loud and they don't have earplugs and I just kind of want to look out for them. You know, sometimes that bass player is pressed right up against that cymbal and you're just like, man, I'm, I'm really sorry, but this is going to be loud. So you can just kind of help your friends out with stuff like that. Band-Aids <laughs> come in handy for all sorts of things. Always have a couple of those in there. Honestly, not really for blisters anymore. I don't really get blisters, but uh, sometimes you get scraped from adjusting the hardware on a backline kit or your own kit or just like scratched in the process of moving stuff around and it's just nice to not have that pain when you're trying to play it seems like it always happens at the beginning of the night when you're setting up too and then you got to play all night oh hiding over here is just an extra sort of standard sized uh symbol wing nut because every now and then you end up with a stand or maybe you own a stand where the wing nut is missing and the part where the symbol lives here is super short and you're hitting that symbol and it looks like it's going to just kind of leap off. Having a couple extra sizes of that will keep you from having to stress out about your crash symbol flying away. Um, I keep all these things in two different bags. This bag here, uh, some headphones came in that I got a while back and I kind of keep all the sort of bulky stuff in this that I don't use every single day. And then this little thing here, I think was probably like a digital camera case or something like that, which you can find these at the Goodwill or whatever now, um, you know, for nothing. I, I think I have four or five of them now. And it's handy because it's padded, it's neoprene, and it's got a zipper on it so you can shove drum keys and rivets and maybe also anything that's like pokey, like these the ends of these rivets. Keep them in here so that when you're reaching into your bag in the dark, you don't, you know, get one in your nail or something like that, which is also a thing that will mess your night up quick. Um, always gaff tape and I usually actually get the skinny one just because it fits in the bag a little bit better um, but wide is good too depending on what you need to do tend to have wide in the studio and then a skinny roll uh, on the road in the bag also tweezers when you're working with gear that's made of metal and wood sticks you are gonna get splinters sooner or later and even if they're not that bad that kind of irritation is another sort of thing that beyond it just like mess like physically messing you up you're noticing it while you're playing and that just might stifle the groove or make you uncomfortable and then you'll have to deal with it afterward and also just no fun finally a flashlight i mean everybody's got a flashlight in their phone now pretty much but having a dedicated flashlight just in case is great because Stages are dark, pretty much always. They'll have the lights up when you're setting up, hopefully, but if you drop something on stage in the middle of the set, it's gonna be real hard to find it if there's strobes going off or if there's carpet on the floor that's the same color as the thing that you dropped. Um, and it, it happens a lot. So a flashlight, super crucial. And something that occurred to me that 
I've sort of spread around to different band leaders I work with is that if you play with the same bands a lot and you know that say like the band leader plays guitar and you play drums, you can do a little solid for your band leader by giving them a drum key to put in their guitar case and maybe even a hi-hat clutch because I feel like those things are super crucial and then have them give you a headstock tuner, a capo and some picks because in a pinch, if a bag gets lost or if somebody forgets one of these little <laughs> things that are always black and get lost on stage seemingly, um, you can kind of save the night and it's saved the night uh, a lot of times. And there are lots of things like that. I mean, if it's a sax player, you can have extra reads for them or something like that. Uh, and it, it, it also creates just a kind of good feel that you take care of each other, which is worth doing. And then lastly, and it, it seems like sort of a silly thing to say, but extra sticks, like one pair of sticks, is not enough sticks <laughs> if you break one of them. And you know, just having one extra pair like unplayed in your bag, just in case, is just one of those things that will, I don't know, it'll become it'll become part of your lifestyle when you have just the knowledge that you're gonna be okay no matter what you're running into when you get there. And beyond things like this, anything else really that you're gonna need, like a crescent wrench or I don't know, like these are things that are super drum specific and they're things that if you don't have them, you could end up having a really difficult gig. And just because I'm curious, we're curious, uh, if there's anything that you don't see here that you always bring to a gig, um, please leave it in a comment because it's always interesting to see what people are doing who are working out there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Um, we got lots of great content coming out and super excited about it. So stay tuned.